Welcome back DIYers to another one of my projects in this house painting series. Today's video project has me fixing the buckling or waving in my LP Smart Side siding. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with LP Smart Side, it's a wood product. Now, what does that mean? Well, as we all know, wood likes to expand and contract, and that's an important factor to keep in mind when we go to do this repair. So I rented this house for about five years before I finally bought it, and every summer I noticed that the siding would buckle up and down. And first I just thought it was because, well, on this side of the house, it doesn't get any direct sunlight on the siding itself. Whereas on the other side of the house, it's in the sun almost all day long. And over there, I'd had very little to no buckling or waving. And the other thing was, I just thought they were lazy and didn't put enough nails in the siding to keep it down. So when I got ready to do this project, I noticed that the siding was bowing up and down and then back up. And in the middle of that wave, was a butt joint or a seam where the two sidings come together. When I investigated that a little further, I found out there was no gap. So there's got to be a gap. If you go on the company's website, and I'll have a link for their website, um, they, you gotta have a minimum of a 3 16 inch gap between the two boards. Well, I didn't have that. And I don't know over the last 12 years if through the cycling of expansion and contraction that the seams just closed, or they were just lazy when they installed it and didn't worry about putting a an expansion joint at all or put too narrow one in there. And if you go to their website and look up how to fix this problem, it's kind of a crude method. And we'll, we'll use this joint as an example. Basically, they take some sheet metal and shove it up underneath the siding over the joint. They put some shims under here to hold up the siding. And basically, they take a reciprocating saw and just saw down each side and make a new joint and then pull everything out. Well, what they forget to tell you is, is there's a nail here and here. In their video, they don't show that. So you're gonna to take that nail out. Well, that's okay, we can do that. But the other problem with that in my house, I don't have any OSB backing. So mine, it's the siding and it's tar paper. That's right, tar paper, like on your roof, two by insulation and sheetrock. So my vapor barrier is all reliant on tar paper. So I thought, you know what? I'll just strip all this siding off, all the molding, and get some OSB put on here, replace the siding and all the trim. Well, there's two problems with that. The biggest one is the price. Uh, right now, the price of lumber is as high as the price of gold. Um, and two, when I would put the OSB on, remember, I got to take the windows out because the windows go on top of the OSB. Well, that sounds okay. That's easy. But when you go inside, now you're going to have a gap all around the window where there's no sheetrock, the width of the OSB. So now you gotta do sheetrock repair. Well, that, that was just too much. Now I know when I first mentioned this project at the beginning of the video, you thought, oh, this is a simple fix, no big deal. Well, sit back, let me show you the method I came up with to fix this problem. Oh, and since it's a DIY project, you know there's gonna be some mistakes, and I'll show you those and how I fix them. And speaking of mistakes, if you like watching these projects and seeing me make these mistakes and how I fix them, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification down there. That way when the next video comes out, you'll be able to watch it and see the mistakes I make and avoid it on your project. And just so you know, all the tools I use in this project I'll have listed down below and there'll be affiliate links. Uh, and if you've been eyeballing this t-shirt, I'll also have a link down below to my Etsy store where you can purchase this and help support the channel. So with all that, let's get started on the project. Anything less than an eighth of an inch is getting fixed. Today's a good oh, 90 to 100 degree day. So if everything should be expanded as much as it's going to. So if it's expanded that much and I still have an eighth of an inch, I should be fine even if it gets hotter than 100. Uh, but if it's less than that, then we're gonna fix it. And I'm gonna go up about, oh, probably about this far. Basically, I'm going to measure at the top and at the bottom because as you'll see, some of these at the bottom, the gap is great, but we'd get up here, the gap is closed, so it's no good. And this is one of them. So let's see here, 3.30 seconds. So that's less than an eighth. So this one is a repair. Even if we go all up here, there's nothing. Okay, this is a perfect example. See how wide it is here? It goes up to nothing. I'm going to go through and mark all these that need to be redone and we'll move on from there. I'm gonna go through and mark uh, a line down each side, try and split it the best I can. As you can see here, there's a nail here and a nail over here. So I'll miss the nails and won't have to re-nail. 
And basically what I'm going to do, probably going to have to use a couple different tools. One, I'm going to use my circular saw and set it to just at three-eighths of a gap, inch deep. Because that's what this stuff is. And I'm going to run it up. And I'll only be able to get to about here, because if I go further, it'll cut into here. And I don't want it to. And then from there, I'm going to use my multi-tool to finish the rest. And if I have to, I've got a, a little blade that I've kind of rigged up to hopefully get up underneath here. All right, so I've got a framing square. Basically, put this up here so I at least have a straight line. Remember my 3 16 inch uh, spacer block. Basically, I'm going to put this up here and try and just split the difference. I'm using an ink pen so I have a nice fine line. I don't want a big fat line from a pencil. So I'll measure my saw blade, but I think it's about an eighth inch. So I'll get up one side and then have to come over just a hair and get the other side. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll go through and mark all these and move on to the next step. Okay, those are all marked off. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull every nail on the bottom of this bottom piece of siding because a if it's buckling it's not holding it anyway and so i'm just going to take them out i'll wind up doing just like i did everything else i'll put some peel bond on it put some paint on it uh, caulk over it and i'm gonna put new nails actually i'm gonna go with screws and screw this in the bottom to help hold it down I got a multitude of tools here, a hammer, a couple, three different pliers, nail puller, and my 13 and one painter's tool. Because basically, they're already where it's buckled, the nail's already popped loose, so I just need to push this in, grab a hold of the nail and pull it out. If that don't work, I'll grab from behind and try and push it so that it'll pop the caulking and I can get a hold of it and take it out, because I don't want to tear up the siding trying to get these out. So now it's time to Bite the bullet and cut these open. So what I'm going to use is my skill saw. Now I've already pre-measured. The blade is 3 30 seconds of a wide when it cuts, which means I can make a cut on each blue line for 3 sixteenths. I've experimented on some scraps as to how deep to set this so that when I come down here, I don't go through the underside. Follow up my multi-tool and get up as high as I can. Then I'm going to put wedges under here, pull this out, and I've got a sawzall blade, a wooden sawzall blade, with a pair of vice grips to get that last little bit. There's about this much I can't get. Okay, you can kind of see the blue lines. Cut this side, and then cut this side. The whole time you got to be careful that I don't, because if I back up high enough, I can cut into this. Cut the other side. The hardest part with this multi-tool is knowing not to go too deep. And it's kind of a feel, you can kind of feel it pop through. What you may or may not notice while I was making those uh, cuts is that I did what I was trying to avoid and that is I cut the tar paper underneath you may not be able to see it very well but there's bare wood down in there and I turned that into that so let's go see how I did it all right so the first thing you have to do is see these two nail holes where they used to be I don't need to worry about that but there's going to be a nail up here and a nail over here. And so I've got to find the spacing between there. I only have about a half inch. Okay, so I got my flashing here and all it was is I just went to Home Depot and got a 10 inch by 10 foot uh, piece of roll flashing. And I took off about a foot of it. As we talked about, I want an inch and a half wide strip. And then I just score it. 
like that. Like I said, all you got to do, snapped, it's done. So what I've done is I got a couple shims to hold this up and I've already kind of pre-worked with this. Um, there's something up in here that's causing it to get stuck. So basically I cut it down uh, so that it'll just barely go up between those nails and it'll slide up in here like this. Okay, so I got my bead of caulking in there. Put this up in here. Got it up in here. And now all I'm gonna do is take the end of this shim and push it back in there. And there, it's up in there. Now, since there's caulking on the back side to seal it down, if water gets behind here, it'll come on the front side of this, hit this lip and come over. So uh, these were fairly easy because of these nails being out. So there's, so there's nails here and here and here and here. So basically, I'm gonna have to find the spacing, cut a thin strip and just have it go up and underneath there um, and do it the same way. But instead of being able to be wide and then narrow, I'm gonna have to be narrow the whole way. And I may or may not have it cup over that edge. You can't pre-bend to get it over that edge. I've tried, um, it doesn't work. So um, like down there, I left it and then when I push it in, it kind of bends it because it's so soft. There we go. I'm doing this just to kind of get that cleared away so it slides easy. That's plenty far because uh, you can't see, but uh, the tear in my tar paper is here, so I'm clear up underneath there, so I'm good. Take our caulking. And what I did was is I just drilled a hole in the tip of here. I didn't cut it because I need as long as I can to get down in there so I can set the caulking against the house. I want it to set on the tar paper. I shove this up in there, it goes over the top of it. A little shim here. All the way up. There we go. Let's see if I can get a close up. And it just comes right down to that edge. I push it in there real tight, and now that caulking will set up and seal it off. So I'll come back behind here and we'll peel bond primer these edges, paint them, and then I'll put my caulk in there again and I'll seal over all of that and keep it waterproof. All right, I got all the butt joints cut and flashed behind. And you'll notice on some of these that there's nails missing with X's on them. Uh, either A, the nail like was coming clear across my butt joint and needed to come out of the way. Or I had one where the nail was up here and I couldn't get up underneath there so I had to pull it. Or it was just basically in the way and I removed it. So we'll go and uh, gonna peel bond primer all these cracks up really well. Unfortunately, it takes a day for that to dry, so I can't come behind and paint it very quickly. So I have to come back tomorrow and paint all these. I wanna make sure I coat this really well. Make sure there's no fibers left uncoated. And the other thing is, is to get up underneath here really well. And those that I'm gonna re-nail, I'm gonna nail them in a different hole. So I'll caulk over these. That's why I wanna peel bond primer them and I'll paint them and caulk those holes and put new nails in. And I wanna make sure and cover everywhere I put that primer. Now I'm ready to go along and fix the base of this first um, lap. And I'll get down here where you can see, but uh, if you remember back when we first started this part of it, how much that waved out and about as we went down through there, um, after I've relieved all these joints, it has come down. I think quite a bit. There's two big areas still left that uh, my two biggest areas that are puffed up, but I've pushed on them and it's actually due, I think, more to the board itself is kind of warped up. I could be wrong, but um, 
that's where we're going to go. So I haven't caulked any of these yet because I want to fix this base and get it all flat. So if there's going to be any movement in the joints, it'll happen before I caulk and then I'll come behind and caulk. Exterior screws, I say they're Prime Guard Plus, which if you read on the bottom, it says galvanize, galvanization on the fasteners is intended for extended life of the fastener. So these are galvanized uh, screws. They're just not the uh, shiny silver ones that you see on the nails. These are a hex headed um, screw. They're number eight by two. I'm gonna look down here and see where the biggest spots are. Like I say, there's two of them. I'm gonna mark them with a pencil. This one here happens to be right next to a seam. This one is not. This is where it bowed out the most of all when it was doing it. I've seen it bow out to where up to two or three of these were bowed with it. So that's where I'm gonna put my first set of screws is right there. So I'm gonna get them started. They're self-tapping and they tap pretty quick. I'm gonna get them started. I'm gonna pull them out. I'm gonna put a little caulking over it and I'm gonna drive them in with the caulking and hopefully seal underneath it. It's a little extra work doing it this way, but Suck that down real nice. Now I'll go back up here to this one. Now, I'll step back and see where I gotta go next. Okay, I got them all screwed in, if you will. Now, if you can see down here, there is some ripples. Like, boy, you just screwed up, but actually, no. In fact, we'll point one out here. Let's see, right here. One right here, but there's a screw here and a screw here, and that's tight against the house. Because like here, that's tight tight against the house. As you can see, we got all the cracks painted and sealed up. Uh, these areas here I did because if you remember back in the sanding video, not I'll leave a link below, that they had a crack right here. Maybe you can see it up close that I caulked. And so I've peel bonded over that and primed it and painted it. And actually from a distance, you can't really see it. So that's what those are. But I got all these done. Now some of these, the nails are out of. And you see that lifts up. So before I can seal this, what I'm gonna do is go through and put the nails back in. Now before I just randomly nail them, I'm gonna lift this up and kind of push under there with a putty knife and see where, because I don't have any structural lumber behind here. All I have is this two by four studs or two by six, whatever they may be, that they use to frame the wall. So I need to see, do I have enough meat to hammer right through here and hit a stud and the same here, or do I need to angle? Because as you can see, that one there, it came out because it was probably angled this way, whereas that one probably went straight in. But that's what I'm gonna look at and see before I put the nails in. And so along the bottom, I'll come back last along the bottom and fill those nail, or actually those are screw holes uh, now, the bottom is all done. I've put all the screws I needed to in the bottom, so I don't have to worry about there. I can just go ahead and, and caulk that. The only thing I need to do with this is, is because this is just open space behind here, is I will put a piece of cardboard so that I don't get caulking dripped on my foundation. As I'm gonna put a little shim behind these, behind this siding so that when I caulk, I get clear up to the top of where the, the siding it is. The top of the siding is probably about right here. So I wanna make sure I get all of that crack caulked. So to do that, like I say, I'm gonna wedge this out so that I can get my caulking all the way up underneath there. 
I went ahead and did this one before I put the nails in. And the biggest reason is, is because of my hose right here, um, water drains down on it. And I wanted to use my hose, but I didn't want to use it with that open. So I did caulk that. But you can see, that's actually, to me anyway, is a nice pretty joint. Uh, it's nicely straight and caulked and everything. So um, I will come back behind and nail this, but you can already see I did what I was talking about. So with a circle and a bullseye, means I can nail straight in and not worry about not hitting any lumber behind. Whereas this one here kind of has an arrow that goes this way, which means I got to angle it just a little bit. I got all the holes marked and what I'm going to use is, is basically just a framing hammer. It's framing because it's got these cross matches on the head so it grips the head. Uh, the other thing I'm using is 0.113 by 2 and 3 eighths hot dipped galvanized nails you can see these are what they call a ring shank if you can see those itty bitty little ridges sucked down tight we'll move on to the next one i know i said i didn't want to screw up and have to re-nail but unfortunately i had two or three spots where i had to and this happens to be one of them you can see right there in fact you might have when i showed you i was nailing this one you might have heard that it kind of glanced off and didn't sound like it hit solid and it didn't because when i come back up and pulled on this it pulled out so i pulled the nail and reset it so unfortunately i had to put some caulk in there and uh, fill it but so i've got all the the butt joints or expansion joints taped off because i'm just too ocd and anal to want to get uh, caulking all over the place kind of like i did when i had did them the first time here's one see that little blue line i was so uh, ocd or anal that i took my square uh, my framing square or speed square i should say put on here and drew a line so when i taped i'd have straight lines i just want a little bit of the wood exposed for the caulking to stick to a little side note something i kind of found that works keep your caulking fresh. I used to just stuff nails down in here, a big 16 penny nail in there to plug the hole to keep my caulking good, but it really didn't work that well. Uh, but what I've done is I've just basically taken some plastic, put over it and rubber band it and sealed it off. And when I take this off, it's like it's brand new. It comes out ready to go. I don't have to uh, push some out and get rid of the, the bad stuff to get to the good. last thing I need to do is all these nails down through here are loose so are, so are those and so I'm taking all those out and basically just gonna put screws back like I did on that side and then caulk over them uh, kind of discovered a little easy secret if you will on doing these holes um, I did the cut the tape hole and put over it and try and do it and it worked okay but when you got multiple holes together like this it doesn't work worth a lick and it's a lot of time consuming so what i do is is i put caulking in the holes and i smear it in get it like i want it and then i come back with a wet finger and smooth it over until just the hole is exposed kind of like here and clean it off and then it looks really good wet my finger See down close how nice and neat that is. These are the ones I just finished. I'll show you some up here of, that I did a few days ago. You can see how they've set, see how much it's shrunk back, but that's okay. I'm gonna come back and fill them again. And the biggest thing is if you look down this side, the waviness is out. Okay, that wraps up this video, once it's painted, you probably won't even be able to tell. Uh, and it'll look real good and uniform because I don't have many over here that aren't done. So your eye will kind of be focused on those that are and all look the same. So it'll look like it was natural. If you like this video and this type of content, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, ring the notification bell and we'll see you on the next video.